Well, hey, howdy, hey, everybody. Scott here, and today we're going to talk about wildcrafting and aluminum. So what is aluminum? It is an element. It's number, um, what, somewhere around six, seven? Somebody can correct me in the comments. But uh, it's a very abundant elemental metal found all throughout the Earth's crust. It's highly reactive, and uh, it's very useful and stable as a metal. We use it for aircrafts, tin cans, well, aluminum cans, <laughs> maybe not tin cans, that would be tin. Um, <laughs> uh, all kinds of space-age, lightweight, durable, flexible materials. And it's also absolutely toxic to us, especially our nervous systems. So we really don't want to get aluminum inside of our bodies, if we can help it at all, and if we want to stay healthy and alive. It's uh, connected to things like headaches, various mental diseases, and cognition problems, uh, Alzheimer's and things like that. It builds up in your body over time. While you, you can uh, naturally get rid of some aluminum, it also can, um, I don't know if it lodges or just bonds up with, with um, brain tissue and uh, can accumulate over your lifetime. Um, the process of uh, decontaminating, uh, oh gosh, what's the word for the chelation, I think? or getting rid of metals out of the body. That's really a topic for a, 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 a different video. But um, for now, let's just say you, you don't want it in your body. It's also connected to allergies and uh, asthma and uh, various disorders throughout the body, especially the digestive system, if you get a bunch of it. And let me scare you for just a moment. There are many plants that are high in aluminum. These are all for uh, 100 gram dried sample. The highest one, uh, this, this is all from the Nutritional Herbology book by Mark Peterson, but the, the highest one that he had evaluated was the Gotacola leaf. And then uh, look at all these values, chickweed, pennyroyal, uh, buchu leaf, is that how you say that? I don't ever, I don't, I don't know what that plant is. Uh, butcher's broom, mullen, I mean, I use mullen. Do you use mullen? Mullen's common, or, or thyme, goodness sakes, echinacea, um, ginger, Everybody uses ginger and then dandelion, and we love dandelion. So uh, what is what is to be done? Do we have to give up our plants to avoid the aluminum? Is that the only thing? Well, no, <laughs> because as it as it happens, free aluminum wants to react with something. It's very reactive. It wants to bind to something, and if you have some free aluminum floating around in your you know your foods or your digestive juices, usually it's just going to uh, it's going to uh, connect with something in your digestive fluids and just get passed out of the body. Fact is, we don't absorb most of the aluminum that we eat. And that's very good, because if we did, we'd all be dead. Very little of it gets absorbed by our digestive tract, as a matter of fact. Some does, so you don't want to eat just a lot of aluminum. But very, very little actually gets inside of us. So, what makes it dangerous? Well, eating a lot of aluminum. If you ate, if you if you sprinkled aluminum flakes on your food every meal, I would venture to say that that would be a bad idea. <laughs> that reminds me of a book, the Mistborn series. If you're a reader, if you like books, this fantasy book, Mistborn series, the characters could um, consume little flakes of metal and they would burn it inside of them. That's the way it was described. And aluminum was one of the metals that, that would give them special powers. And I remember thinking, oh, that's not a good idea. You don't need to use aluminum. That's bad for you. But back to the plants, <laughs> um, or uh, back to the dangers of aluminum. So just eating a whole bunch of aluminum-rich foods could be a problem. I personally am not worried about the plants. If, if my digestive system is healthy, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have... Um, some kind of anomaly that causes me to absorb it more. I'm not going to worry about aluminum from plant sources. I am a little concerned with cooking with aluminum uh, cookware. Not so much if it's intact, but if it's got scratches and, you know, you're using... I don't want to use... Definitely don't want to use metal utensils against it because they can scratch up, you know, a molecule here, a few molecules there, and then you, know, you got more, you know, aluminum in your body than you can handle. You also don't want to use acidic foods in aluminum pans because the acids can react to the aluminum and uh, pull some of that off of the body of the pan, and then, then you've got a bunch more aluminum in your body. So I, I really like cooking with cast iron. I guess when I, those rare times I go out to eat at a restaurant, I don't know what they're using, but um, in my kitchen I don't, I don't ever use aluminum. 
And then uh, aluminum cans with uh, soda are, are uh, an alcoholic beverage inside of those. The reason that I bring up soda and alcohol in particular is because those can tend to be acidic. And acids tend to pull away aluminum molecules from the sides of the can or from the side of the pan that you're cooking in. So what we, we, put, a, we put our most acidic drinks, like sodas, in probably the worst, uh, the worst thing you could put them in for, for an acid and then we drink it all down, but what's the alternative? Put them in plastic, then you're going to get a bunch of plastic chemicals. Actually, I would say the alternative, if you're going to drink a soda, is to get it in a glass bottle. If you're a soda drinker, I, I very rarely do get a soda. Um, usually if I'm out with my kids having a special day with them and we want to have a really special treat, we will get uh, we'll, we'll go by the Atwoods and get one of their fancy sodas in a glass bottle, you know, pick out a fun flavor. And we always get the ones that have, you know, pure cane sugar, not the corn syrup. But that's that's a different topic, too. Your tap water can have aluminum. It's actually intentionally added as a purifying agent because it bonds to things, and then they, they try to filter it out. But are they filtering all of the aluminum out? Uh, well, technically, you know, no. Some of it gets through. Probably not a large amount, but um, I, I still don't want to drink it. They say that fluoride competes with aluminum for absorption in the body. Well, that's great. The water's fluoridated, so as long as you have fluoridated water, you don't have to worry about absorbing aluminum, unless you happen to believe, like I do, that fluoride is a deadly toxin. Well, fluoride is a deadly toxin. It, it's all a, you know how much you take. If you took enough fluoride, you just keel over dead. But it's also used as a pesticide. I, I don't think that fluoride is good for us. I think that it has some... It has some potential benefits in, you know, in, uh, you know, teeth. But I am not at all convinced that the benefits are outweighing the risk. But again, that's, I'm getting off onto another video. So, uh, you know, there's that. It's in baby formula. Yikes. It's in uh, cosmetics. So, you know, makeup, antiperspirant, not, uh, deodorant. No, antiperspirant. Yeah, got to get that right. The deodorant just tries to make you not stink. Antiperspirant actually stops your sweat glands from releasing sweat. That's the one that uses aluminum. They're in antacids. And I, I put leaky gut here because I, I have not officially read this, although it's my own personal theory, and I would not be surprised if I was right here, that uh, leaky gut is probably what, uh, what causes a lot of us to get too much aluminum. When we have leaky gut, the, the gaps in, in the, the uh, cell walls, or the, the, the wall of cells, the, the cell membranes, uh, in our digestive system, uh, they get too large, and too much non-food things can leak. You know, they can seep through that barrier and get directly into our bloodstream. Uh, things like aluminum. Even the, the aluminum that is bound to something and would be flushed out of our body can just happen to bloop through the uh, through the the loose connection of our leaky bowels and get in there. So you want to take care of that leaky bowel. That would be, um, I think a lot of that has to do with modern gluten. But again, I'm getting off onto a different topic. And then vaccines. Let's talk about vaccines. Now the uh, the pros and cons of vaccines. Boy, we could really get off onto a onto a different video here. That is a big topic, very controversial, very charged with emotions. So I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, you know rain on your parade. However, however you take vaccines, if you think they're the best thing ever, or if you think they are the devil, I, I'm not going to rain on your parade here. But I do want to point out that it is factually accurate that many uh, vaccines contain aluminum. Well, so what? Because it's a very small amount, right? Um, I looked up, look, uh, there's the, uh, the web address above that syringe there. Uh, I looked up there, that is a, it's a pro-vaccine, pro -vaccine, it's, it's a medical site, that infants will receive about 4.4 micrograms of aluminum from vaccines during their first six months of life. And that they said that this is insignificant because they will ingest 7 milligrams, or that, yeah, mil, not micrograms, milligrams. Milligram? Yeah, milligrams. Yeah, so 4.4 milligrams. They will ingest 7 milligrams from their mother's breast milk, or if they use formula, it would be 38 milligrams. Or if they use a soy-based formula, it would be 117 milligrams. So don't be scared of the vaccine was the conclusion. Now, my conclusion was I sort of flipped that around. I became scared of soy-based infant formula. Now, I know that not all mothers can breastfeed, um, 
like uh, we, uh, well, I say we, I, I didn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> my wife breastfed our, our first two kids, but the next two we got out of foster care, and so they had to have formula. But uh, maybe we ought to be looking at that formulation and see if we can bring that number down a little bit and definitely not use the soy formula. But there, there's two big differences here. One, a baby is very small. It's very small and very delicate. And, um, you know, one milligram of, of uh, aluminum, if I was to absorb one milligram of aluminum in my big, fully grown adult man body, it's going to be much less significant than one milligram of aluminum into a tiny little baby. I mean, the, 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 uh, the, the, the percent is, is much different. You know, I'm many times larger than a baby. Um, so it would, it would take less aluminum to harm a child than it would to harm an adult. And plus then, you know, if the aluminum, if the aluminum stays in the body, then it, it has a whole lifetime to cause harm rather than, you know, my, however many, however many years I have left. Um, and another thing is that there are going to be differences of uh, absorption between adults and children. I don't have this for a fact uh, right in front of me, but I would tend to expect a child to be, a, a baby, an infant, to be more likely to absorb the aluminum to, for their digestive system to be less you know, rugged and built up and resistant and to have less safeguards because you know infants are fragile and delicate. Again, I don't know that for a fact. That's sort of an educated guess. But here's one really big difference between the various milligrams of aluminum in the uh, milk or formula and in the vaccine, and that is the vaccine completely bypasses the digestive system. I mean, how, how many milligrams of aluminum would an infant have to consume before they actually absorb the 4.4 milligrams? I don't know. A lot. But... I just think it's a bad idea. Injecting aluminum directly into your body. I feel that way about the uh, the mercury. You know, some vaccines have thimerosal, which is a form of mercury. And people will say, well, look, a can of tuna fish has more mercury than than a flu shot does. Well, you know, that's that's factually true. But I don't inject a can of tuna fish into my arm. It, I have to eat it, and it has to go through my digestive system and have processes in place. If, if I just absorbed all of the mercury that I was, you know, in contact with the, the minute amounts in my food, I'd probably be dead now. But I don't because digestive system. But the, uh, is, is there not some other way to formulate a, a vaccine? If you're pro-vaccine, okay, but is there not a way to formulate it without the aluminum and the mercury? Uh, and spoiler alert, yes, there is. I, I know they're used as adjuvants to make the, to make the immune response stronger, but, um, not all of the vaccines have them. They're not necessary to use these toxins. Well, this has been a little bit rambly, but this has been my report on, um, I almost said mercury, on aluminum. This has been my report on a bunch of things, but on aluminum and at least theoretically plants, even though we talked about a bunch of things. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of this meandering conversation. And uh, we'll have another video tomorrow. No, tomorrow actually is the book report Monday, isn't it? And uh, then we'll have another video as we continue through this 31-day video challenge. Keep your eyes out for plants and zombies, everybody. Happy foraging.